Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. My name is Tara, and I am a mom of two boys, a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and I make Montessori and motherhood videos here on my channel. Today's video is the first video in my new series, Our Montessori Home. If you haven't already done so, go watch the video I just posted before this, which is just an intro video explaining what this new series is all about. But basically, I am taking you guys inside my home to show you how we Montessori at home. Today's video is going to be all about our Montessori friendly kitchen. Before we get into today's video, I just want to let you know that there is no right or wrong way to do Montessori when we're talking about a Montessori home environment. The purpose of this series is just to show you guys how we Montessori in our home to give you inspiration and ideas, but know that every home is different, every family is different, and everyone's needs are going to be different. So what works in my home might not work in your home. So I'm kicking off this series starting out in the kitchen. The goal of a Montessori kitchen is to create an environment that invites your children to participate in real life kitchen activities like preparing food and cleaning up after themselves. Basically, we're creating a space in our kitchen with our child in mind. So often, the kitchen becomes a place where kids are not allowed. As adults, we spend a lot of time in our kitchen, so it makes sense that our children are going to want to spend time there with us. The kitchen is a great place to provide opportunities for children to learn and participate in everyday life. So to give your child this independence, we are going to be creating a space that your child feels welcome and capable of participating in and even adding real value. Before I start showing you around my kitchen, let's talk really quickly about safety. I think the number one reason that people tend to keep their children out of the kitchen is for safety reasons. Obviously, safety is really important, especially in the kitchen. So the first thing that we want to do is safety proof our kitchen so that our kids are not able to get into anything that could potentially harm them. This is probably something that we've already done. Usually once our kids start getting mobile as babies and start crawling around, we get those cabinet locks and that sort of thing. But as we're introducing our kids into the kitchen, we're setting up spaces where they can access items and then there are gonna be spaces where they can't. So those are cabinets with chemicals or sharp cooking utensils, those sort of things we do wanna put away. This isn't like a free for all for kids to be able to access anything they want. Um, we're gonna be very intentional with the types of things that they have access to. I'm often asked how old children should be when they start coming in and helping out in the kitchen. And this is really whenever you feel that they are ready. Um, before I felt like my boys were old enough to really help in the kitchen, I used to put them in their high chair and just kind of place them near me so they could watch me cook. And then once I felt more comfortable for them to come in, I would put them in their learning tower and they could stand on their own. This was probably closer to 18 months um, when my kids really were able to come in and help out and stand in their learning tower on their own. I do have plans to make a video about how my kids help in the kitchen, but for today's video, I'm gonna focus on how we set up our kitchen so that it's functional and accessible to my kids. All right, now I'm ready to take you guys inside my kitchen and show you what we've set up in our kitchen and how we make it more Montessori friendly and really just more child friendly. One thing that we have in our kitchen and is a common thing that you'll find in a lot of Montessori homes is a learning tower. While the learning tower is not a Montessori piece of furniture, I do feel like it is a great addition to your kitchen. You definitely do not need a learning tower for your kids to be able to help out in the kitchen, but I think some way to get your kids to counter height would be really great. I think something like a stool or a high chair or even a step stool could be a great way to get your kids up to counter height. Something that they can get in and out of independently would also be great. That's the thing I love about the learning tower even from a very young age, like 18 months, kids are able to get in and out of the learning tower on their own. So when they need to get up to the counter, they're able to, but when they want to get down from the counter, they're able to do that as well. But like I said, any way that they can get up to counter height is totally fine. I have seen so many different kinds of learning towers. They make learning towers that are adjustable. Um, you can use them from like 18 months through six years. I think that the Sprout Sous Chef Tower is one of those. I think you can use it up to six years. I don't wanna spend too much 
much time on the learning tower, but it is a great tool to get your kids to the counter. They can do things like prep food and wash veggies. You can bring it over to the sink, they can wash dishes, or even bring it over to the stove top and they can help you cook. Another piece of furniture that you often find in a Montessori home is a weaning table. And a lot of people actually choose to, instead of bringing their children up to the counter, they bring the counter down to them. So they use the weaning table not just for eating, but also for food prep. Because it is the perfect size for your child, it is a place where your child can prepare their snacks or prepare their meals and also sit and eat. I have a whole video on my channel about the Montessori weaning table, so I am not going to go into detail on this video. You can click over and watch that if you want to learn more about the weaning table, but this is another thing that you often find in a Montessori household. If you watched my first Montessori home tour that I did about a year ago, you will see that we did have a weaning table in that house tour. However, now that we've moved and my kids are getting a little bit older, I've actually decided to take out our weaning table and move it into our playroom and turn it into a craft table. So we no longer have a weaning table in our kitchen or our kitchen area. Both of my boys are at the ages where they're able to get in and out of their chairs on their own to sit at our bigger table and they both prefer to eat there. I think the waiting table is a really great resource for young toddlers. It allows them so much independence, it helps to build their confidence, it helps them with feeding. Again, I go over all of this in my weaning table video, so go watch that if you want to learn more about it. I did want to share with you guys what my boys are sitting at now that they are not at the weaning table. So instead of having them just on a regular chair that neither of them would fit on at two and four years old, we have the trip trap high chairs. So these high chairs are amazing. I love them because they start out as a normal high chair um, that you can use with your babies and then they convert to a toddler chair and then they can even convert just to a regular chair that they could sit at at a desk or at a table. So we've talked about access to the countertops um, for cooking and food prep and we talked about weaning tables. Now I want to go over all the additional parts of our kitchen that my kids have access to and what makes our kitchen Montessori. So kids see us opening and closing cabinets to get our cups and plates and they often want to imitate us and what we are doing in the kitchen. So in our kitchen I've created a space for my kids to have access to their own child-sized plates and cups and utensils that is at their height. Okay guys, I've grabbed my vlogging camera and I want to take you into the rest of our kitchen now. I want to show you around and show you what I've done to make my kitchen more accessible for my children. Now remember that my kids are ages two and four, so this is what is working for us currently at this moment. It's actually changed quite a bit as my children have grown and gotten older. So what you see in my video I made a year ago may be different and there's going to be some things that are the same. So the rest of this video is going to be down here at child height because that is where everything is. When you're setting up any Montessori space in your home, you're going to want to make sure that you are getting down to child height. Kind of see what it looks like at their height. What are they seeing? Can they look into this drawer? Um, is it too high for them? Are they having to reach up to grab something? Um, these are all things that you want to consider when making Montessori spaces in your home. Basically child friendly spaces. The first area of the kitchen that I want to show you is a drawer that we keep our children's plates and utensils and bowls. This is a drawer that is very low to the ground. Both of my boys can easily access it and because it's so low it makes it easy for them to be able to pick up the plates and the bowls and bring them over to the table. So let me show you. So this is the drawer. As you can see, it is pretty low to the ground. And when I open it up, it has all of my children's plates and bowls and even their silverware. So traditionally, Montessori uses natural materials. So this would be things like glass and porcelain and um, metals and wood. Those um, natural materials are what is encouraged in Montessori. So if you go to a Montessori school, the kids are going to be eating off of real plates and with real utensils and glass cups. 
And I think that that is amazing. However, I think in a Montessori home, it is not necessary. If you already have plastic plates and cups and utensils, there is no need to go out and buy a whole new set of items for your home. If you watched my Montessori at home video that I put out last year, you'll notice that we had a lot of plastic plates and cups and bowls. And since then I've actually gotten rid of a lot of those. It wasn't because I wanted my home to be more Montessori. It was just because a lot of those plastic plates had seen a lot of wear and we've recently just been trying to move over to more natural materials for just environmental reasons and personal health reasons. So we were in need of buying some more plates and bowls and that sort of thing anyway. So we decided to invest in these plates. I think that they're porcelain, they're Swiss, and I found them on Amazon. So we got a set of plates and bowls. I also went ahead and bought a few more of these just like smaller utensils. I found all of these on Amazon. I will link all of these on my Amazon storefront if you are looking for utensils or plates. However, do not feel like you need to have these natural materials in order to make your home Montessori. I am a big fan of using what you've got. And we still do have these silicone bowls and these bamboo bowls that we use all the time as well. I also really love stainless steel. We have, when, we, when I show you where our cups are, we have some stainless steel kids cups. So I think that's a great alternative if you're worried about um, items breaking and but you're looking to stay away from plastic um stainless steel is always a great option this is the drawer that my kids use the most often and i just love that it's really low and they're able to access um, all of these things and have that independence around setting the table and getting their own bowls and plates and forks and spoons and that sort of thing so the next drawer up is also a drawer that i have with some kids items and both of my kids can access this drawer as well we've got some silicone plates here i have a few of these napkins from love every and i have these love every placemats my kids really love these because they're able to see where all the items go and they love matching it up before that we had these cloud placemats that i would use just to help with spills and my kids really like that. And then I've also just kept a couple of silicone bowls, bowls up here that do not fit below. We are back at child height now and at a different part of our kitchen. This is just right beside our kitchen table where we eat at. And I wanna show you the last space in our kitchen where I keep a lot of my boys' um, kitchen items and just wanna show you guys what we've done to make this Ikea play kitchen a functional sink so this area I've got two things um, this cabinet behind me which is a from the hearth and hand brand at Target and then these this behind me is the IKEA play kitchen we'll start off here with the cabinet in here is where I keep some of my kids snacks and some of their kitchen utensils so at the very top here, um, I've got these very small strainers so the kids can strain their own fruits, berries, and that sort of thing to wash them. So I just found these on Amazon. And then in here, I have a little basket where I'll just put the utensils that they may be needing for that day for their snack. I usually don't keep all of these out at one time, but I just wanted to put them here so I could show you some of the things that my kids use in the kitchen. So one is just an apple slicer. My four-year-old knows how to use this. We have a cherry pitter, and I also have a grape cutter, but I think that is being washed right now. We have a little funnel in case they need that. We also have this squiggle chopper. This is great for little hands to hold onto and to start learning how to chop and cut items. I also have a couple of peelers because my kids like to help out with peeling apples and potatoes and that sort of thing. And we have this egg slicer. This is great for slicing eggs, but also um, when your toddlers are really little, you can put strawberries in here and it's a great way to slice strawberries. The other thing we have up here is our citrus juicer. My boys really enjoy using this to make orange juice. So this is usually always in the cabinet because we usually like to pull this out and make oranges. Make oranges, make orange juice. 
And then moving down, this is where I am keeping some of their snacks. So we have still trying to figure out what works for us in our home as far as snacks go. I don't know about your kids, but my kids are like snack monsters. They just want snacks all day. So I'm trying out a new thing where I just put a few snacks in here and these are the snacks that they have for the day. Um, the only thing that I found to be, that has been a challenge is refrigerated snacks. My four-year-old is able to reach some parts of our refrigerator, however my two-year-old really isn't, so he's not able to get himself refrigerated snacks. Um, I actually was going to hold off making this video because we are planning on creating a coffee bar in our house that is going to have a mini fridge and I plan to use that mini fridge to put some of our kids refrigerated snacks and it will be at their height um, but I don't know when that project is going to be complete so until then what I have found is this little lunch box it's called a packet and you can freeze it and there's like a freezer bag inside here if that makes sense inside the lunchbox and then you can put refrigerated items and it keeps them cold for most of the day so you can put like your cheese sticks um, or your yogurt and it will keep them cold and then your kids can still have access to them when they need them so that's one option in my last video i had a very small um refrigerator it was like one that could hold like six cans but that broke and i just didn't feel like we needed to replace it and it was it wasn't a necessary thing to have i'm hoping that once we get an actual mini fridge installed in this coffee bar in our house that my kids will be able to utilize that but until then um yeah this has been working really well for us so i also just have some fruit here in this basket and then at the top i have some fig newtons in this container and my boys usually help themselves to cereal in the morning so i keep their cereal in this container this is a great way to store cereal or other snacks because it's really easy for kids to get into containers like this this is just one of the oxo containers and what i've done is i've included a little scoop in here so my boys can scoop their cereal and pour it into their bowls and they're able to really help themselves pretty much completely getting their own bowls getting their spoons getting their cereal the only thing i have to do is get the milk for them and for the milk what i do i have one of these little coffee creamer things and i just pour their milk this is an perfect amount of milk for one bowl of cereal and I'll pour milk in here and then they're actually able to pour their own milk into their bowls as well. And when we have the refrigerator at their height, I'm actually going to just keep a little jug of milk in there for them that they can use to pour their own milk. So I'm trying to give them ways to have independence around meals and food prep and that sort of thing and that's one way i've found to be able to give them some independence the next cabinet below here i have just cleaning supplies i have a spray bottle with a little bit of cleaner here and some rags so that they can spray and wipe up any spills that they have and speaking of cleaning you can see over here in the corner we also have a few other items for cleaning so i have the swiffer mop that i have taken out the middle section of the Swiffer to make it more child size so my kids can use that to help clean up. We also have this Love Every mop which is a functional mop where there is actually a sprayer on here and there's just water in here there's no cleaner um, but it has this little pad that's reusable and they can clean up any spills that they have with this mop. And then we also have this Dyson vacuum. This is the kids Dyson. It says that it sucks um, up dirt, but it really does not. <laughs> so do not buy this thinking that this is going to be a functional vacuum. This is really just a toy play vacuum, but when I'm vacuuming, my kids like to help out and they like to vacuum as well. So we keep this over here so that they can vacuum too. We do have some more cleaning items on this Melissa and Doug cleaning stand. It came with a broom so that you can sweep up with the broom, a mop. I don't think that this is actually very functional, but I do keep it on here in case they want to use it. 
and then this duster. This is pretty functional actually, but I've thought about switching it out for a Swiffer one, but um, my kids enjoy using this duster. The one thing I did switch out is the dustpan because the dustpan it comes with it just didn't feel like really worked at all. So I got this little dustpan off Amazon and now I keep that on here with the other items. Now let's move over to the Ikea kitchen, which we have turned into a functional kids kitchen. So in here is where we keep their cups. So if they need to come and get a cup of water, they can do that by just getting a cup and then they can get water out of this faucet right here. I'm gonna go into how that works in just a minute. And then at the very bottom, I have a cutting board. If they want to come over here and do food prep on in this area, they can actually take off this dish strainer and they can put this cutting board on here and they can chop on the cutting board if they want to. But before I pick up the camera and show you guys a little bit more about the functional kitchen, I just wanna say that it is not necessary for you to have something like this in your home in order to make your home Montessori. The main things I would say are to have some sort of access to water for your child. So that could look like a water bottle that they have access to so that they are able to drink water when they feel thirsty. It doesn't mean that they have to always have access to running water, um, which is what this is. I think that is a great addition if you're able to provide a way for your child to have access to water either in a pitcher that they can pour for themselves or um, a tap or a refrigerator that has water or something along those lines. That's great, but it is not a necessity to have in order to make your home Montessori. I see a lot of Montessori accounts that say like your kids have to have access to running water or like you have to get one of those water pitchers or or do something like this and it is not necessary. At my kids Montessori school they just give them their water bottles that they have access to the entire day and I think the importance there is that they have independence over when they're thirsty and they have the access to the water to drink. So a lot of days we just had to do the same thing. Each of my kids will have their own water bottle and they can use that to drink out of during the day. The amount of times that they drink out of the water from the sink is so small. <laughs> Mostly they use the sink for like food prep and for washing their hands and that sort of thing. I think that this kitchen setup could be great for somebody who doesn't have a place where their child can access running water to wash their hands or something like that. It is working for us right now, but I do want to say that you have to constantly change out this one gallon jug of water and that I was shocked at how quickly my kids could go through one gallon of water. So it's something to think about if you are planning to do this IKEA kitchen hack. All right guys, I want to show you a little bit about this IKEA kitchen and how we set it up and how our kids use it. So at the top here you can see we just have this drying rack. I found this mini drying rack um, on Amazon and underneath it I just put one of these IKEA, what are these called? the Ikea Trofast um, bins and it fits perfectly inside here. So this is great because this could also be used for other things as well. But right now we're just using that to catch any of the water that drains down. Probably what everyone wants to see is how this part of the kitchen works. This is just soap. I actually put dish soap in here in case the boys wanna wash any dishes, but they can also use it as hand soap. This is a little pump that pumps water from a gallon tank below, which I will show you in just a second. And then over here, I have a little sponge for them to use um, if they wanna wash any dishes. So what you can do if you want to get running water is just push that button at the top to start the water and push it again to stop. My husband drilled some holes in here so that the water is able to drain. And then if you open up this cabinet, you can see how we're doing that. Um, I've kept a little cloth here just in case there are any spills, but you can see in the back here, let me move this out of the way so I can show you what the water looks like in the back. So in the back here, I have just a gallon of water which I can fill up and you can see that there is a hose running through it. That hose just connects to here and there were pre-drilled holes right here from the Ikea sink 
um, fixture, the kids pretend fixture that was put here. Um, so I was just able to thread that through one of the holes and that worked perfectly. And then what I have is another one gallon container that I cut the top off of. And then what I've done in, in the sink is I actually just added this funnel here so that the water funnels directly into this container and keeps it from splashing around because I've noticed that sometimes it does splash. So yeah, I've kept that there in case it does splash, but it's worked really well. Again, my only downfall with this whole system is having to constantly fill that one gallon of water. You will be surprised how fast your kids can go through one gallon of water. I keep a little dish towel here so my kids can dry their hands. Moving on to beside the kitchen, I do have a small trash can for my kids. This is not really necessary. It's just that my two-year-old wasn't able to access our larger trash can and open it on his own. So I wanted to give him a place where he could throw away his own trash. So for right now, we have this here. And then, yeah, this is just the um, Melissa and Doug mop stand. This is our kitchen setup. Oh, I also have this rug underneath it. I got this rug from Target and this is just in case there are any splatters of water. My kids aren't slipping and it kind of um, gives that extra layer. That's all I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps out my channel. And if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video in my series. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.